Okay, so um, let us look at some examples of modifying any chemical equation and how that affects the Kc values. So what we're going to see here is that basically the Kc expression itself is dependent on how the equation for the reaction is written. So let's look at this particular reaction, the reaction between nitrogen monoxide and oxygen to form nitrogen dioxide. Okay, so that's the equation and it's balanced. We have to always ensure that the equation is balanced and it is balanced in this case. So we can therefore write down a KC expression for that equation, as you can see here, all right? And it turns out experimentally that the KC value is equal to 4.67 times 10 to the 13. Um, and of course, it's at 298 Kelvin. Remember we said, I think I said earlier that the KC is actually dependent on temperature. Um, later on, we're going to examine the temperature dependence of KC um, and how we can predict what will happen to the KC value if the temperature increases or decreases, but that's for later on. Okay, so that's a KC expression. So let's look at this equation, all right? Um, which if you compare it to the original equation here, you see that it's the reverse, right? So what we're gonna look at is the relationship between the Kc for this equation and the Kc for the original equation. So if we were to write down the Kc expression for this equation, um, you're gonna get this. Kc, we're gonna call it Kc prime, is equal to the concentration of the products, um, NO1, O2. So we raise the concentration of NO to the two times the concentration of O2 divided by the concentration of NO2, NO2 squared. Right, so that's the KC expression coming directly from this reaction or this equation. We can express this in this way, right? One over all of this right here. You'll notice that this here in relation to this is flipped over, right? And you'll also notice that this here, all of this down here as a denominator is the same thing as the KC expression for the first equation, which is equal to 4.67 times 10 to the 13, as we said before. So therefore we can set this to be equal to one over 4.67 times 10 to the 13 or one over Kc, the original Kc, the Kc for the original reaction. And when you do this on your calculator, you're going to get your answer, which is equal to 2.14 times 10 to the minus 14, all right? So basically we can see that the Kc for the reaction written in one direction would be equal to one over Kc of the reverse reaction, all right? So that's one thing that we can take away from what we have just done here. Okay, here's another example. Again, we're starting from the original equation, which has the Kc value of 4.67 times 10 to the 13. Now let's consider this reaction. And if you compare this equation to this, you'll notice two things. One, it's flipped. In other words, the reactants here are the products here and the product here is the reactant here, all right? So that's one thing you'll notice. Another thing you'll notice if you compare these two equations, two equations, I'm sorry, you'll notice <clears throat> that all the coefficients that were present here in this equation for the respective substances are halved in this equation for the respective substances. So for example, O2 had a coefficient of one here, it's half here, NO had a coefficient of two here, it's one here, and NO2 has a coefficient of two here, but it's one here. So all the coefficients of these substances are halved in the new reaction or the new equation. So what, how do we determine the Kc for the new equation? Well, what we have to do is write down the Kc expression for this equation. So the Kc expression for this equation would be the concentration of NO times the concentration of O2 raised to the half divided by the concentration of NO2, right? And if you examine this closely, you'll see that this expression here would be equal to one over Kc of the original expression raised to the half, all right? So all we have to do is plug in this value here into this expression, and this would be equal to the square root of 2.14 times 10 to the minus 14, because this is a value that we got for one over Kc from the previous problem or the previous example. So therefore the square root of that is equal to 1.46 times 10 to the minus seven, all right? So basically what we can conclude based on this example here is that not only will the Kc value of the next equation or, the, or this equation here, not only will it be flipped, 
because of the switchover of the reactants and products, but because everything is halved, then the KC expression, um, the flipped over value of the KC expression will be raised to the half to get to the new KC um, value, all right? So um, just to summarize a bit, based on what we have just discussed, for the reverse reaction, KC is reciprocal of the KC for the forward reaction. Uh, the next thing we can conclude based on what we have just done is that when an equation is that divided by two, KC for the new reaction is the square root of KC of the original reaction, all right? So here's a general rule here, um, as it relates to the previous rule that we just mentioned. When the coefficients of an equation are multiplied by a common factor n to produce a new equation, then we will raise the original KC value to the power of n to obtain the new equilibrium constant. So basically, if you have an equation and then you multiply right through it by a certain value, then the KC for the resulting new equation will be the old KC raised to the n value, all right? Um, okay, so, um, oh, very important. Another thing we need to talk about here, I think I mentioned this before, we must initially start off with a balanced equation when we are citing a value for KC. So um, balanced equation is important because if the equation is not balanced, then you'll have the wrong KC expression and any other calculation based on that will be erroneous, all right? So that's very important. Make sure that you check that your equation is balanced first before you move on to solving a problem involving KC. Okay, so with that said, let's look at this example. In this example, the question says that the equilibrium constant for this reaction, and they gave you the balance equation, at 718 Kelvin is 7.07. .07. So the first question is asking, what is the value of Kc for the reaction? And it gives you this equation, all right? So what we have to do is compare this equation to this equation. And if you look at them carefully, you'll notice that this equation is the reverse of this equation, all right? So based on that fact, and based on what we have learned a while ago, we can write down that Kc prime for this equation, right, let me squeeze it down here, Kc prime for this equation will be equal to one over the original Kc, which is equal to one over 7.07. .07. Uh, let me do this on my calculator here. So one divided by 7.07. .07. And according to my calculation, this works out to be equal to, rounded off to three sig figs, works out to be equal to 0 0.4141, 141, all right? So that's the answer for the A part. The B part, it says, what is the value of H2 plus I2 to give you 2HI? All right, compare, go back to my pointer mode. So again, we have to, whoops, what did I do wrong? Okay, so again, we have to compare this equation to the original equation, or we could compare it to this equation. Um, it doesn't matter which one, so I'm just gonna go back to the original, right? Just for, you know, the sake of convenience. Okay, so when we compare this um, to this, what do we notice? We notice that all the coefficients here are doubled to get this equation. So if you remember what we said, whenever you multiply right through by a certain factor or coefficient or number, then the Kc for the new equation would be the original Kc raised to the n power. So therefore in this case, Kc, I'm gonna call this Kc double prime, just to distinguish between that and Kc prime. So Kc double prime, double prime, would be equal to Kc squared which in this case would be 7.07 .07 squared. And let me do this on my calculator, 7.07 .07 squared. According to my calculation, when rounded to three sig figs would be equal to 50.0. So this would be equal to 50.0. And that would be the answer to this question, all right? Okay. So those are just two examples showing you how to manipulate the KC when the equation is modified. All right. We can also have a situation where you can have two equations or more that when added up, give you one equation and you can basically use the KC value of the added up equations to find the KC for the new equation. So let me just 
use this example right here. So let's say we have this equation here and your task is to determine the KC for this equation. Now, you're given these two equations here and your KC values, right? So you're given this equation here and you're given this equation here, all right? Now, if you look at these two equations carefully, let me go back to my pointer mode here again. If you look at these two equations carefully, you'll see that when you add these two equations together, right, you're going to get this equation, right? Um, so let me show you how that works out. Because if you remember from before when you were doing thermochemistry and you're adding up equations um, according to Hess's law, there are certain items that will cancel out on both sides. In this particular case, the two NOs here and here will cancel out, right? So what will you be left with? You will be left with, whoops, N2, whoops, N2O plus half plus one gives you three over two O2, and then that will give you two NO2, which is the same thing as the equation here for which you're asked to find this KC value, right? So you're given KC2 and KC3, and basically you need to find out what KC1 is. So what is KC1? Well, if you write down the expression for KC1, KC1 is equal to the concentration of NO2 squared divided by the concentration of N2O times the concentration of O2 raised to the 3 over 2, right? And if you look at this carefully, you'll see that this will be equal to the KC for this equation here, which is concentration of NO squared divided by the concentration of N2O times the concentration of O2 raised to the half multiplied by the KC for this expression, which is concentration of NO2 squared. Actually, yes, concentration of NO2 squared, I'm sorry, divided by concentration of NO raised to the 2 times the concentration of O2. And this is true because some cancellation will take place. Um, namely, the concentration of NO squared here and here will cancel out. So therefore, your resulting equation would be, um, oh, this should be squared, by the way. So the resulting equation would be concentration of NO squared divided by the concentration of N2O times the concentration of O2 raised to the 3 over 2. And this would be equal to the KC1 that the question is asking for. So therefore, the KC1, KC1 would be equal to KC2 times KC3, 3. So all we have to do is put the numbers in. So 1.7 times 10 to the minus 13, times 4.67, times 10 to the minus 13, or 10 to the 13, I'm sorry. So when I do my calculation here, 1.7 times 10 to the minus 13, times 4.67, times 10 to the 13. And according to my calculations, when rounded off to two sig figs, this works out to be equal to 7.9. So let me squeeze it down here. So this would be equal to 7.9. And this would be the final answer, all right? So basically, that's how we use two equations and their KC values to find the KC value for the third equation, which results from the addition of the two equations, um, you multiply their KC values together, all right? So that is summarized over here. Adding equations gives the desired equation. So therefore, multiplying the KC values gives you the equilibrium constant for the overall reaction, all right? Okay, um, so that's it for now. The next topic we're going to discuss is 
equilibrium involving gases. All right. Okay. Until next time.